So you're running Windows on your main machine and you'd like to run Ubuntu too. Why? Well most likely, your workstation has your best CPU, your best GPU, your best RAM, and probably lots of SSDs. And even though I like to virtualize almost everything, sometimes you gotta go bare metal. Hey, welcome back, so I'm Techno Tim, and today we're gonna talk about dual booting Windows and Ubuntu. And real quick, before we get started, if you have a question about anything we talk about in this video today, check out my live stream on Twitch. I stream there every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So if you have a question about anything we talk about today, stop in and say hello. Oh, and another thing, real quick. Thanks ahead of time for the likes and comments because it lets me know if I'm on track. And if this is your first time seeing any of my videos, don't forget to subscribe. And so, let's get into it. So we all know you can virtualize Linux locally, you can virtualize it remote, you can even run WSL on Windows, or you can run it on an entirely different PC and remote into that PC. But nothing beats the raw performance on running on your own machine and running it bare metal. Let's face it, most likely your workstation is the highest performing machine you have in your house. And it probably has the best video card in your house as well. And instead of remoting in or virtualizing Ubuntu, today we're gonna set up a dual boot on your main workstation running Windows and Ubuntu. So you can take advantage of all of your hardware and run it bare metal. And so this guide is gonna be one of the best ways to dual boot your PC or laptop. We'll be doing this with UEFI and not legacy BIOS. This has many advantages and makes it much easier than messing around with grub and bootloaders and BCD edit and all of those things that could mess up your main installation or any of your partitions. And we'll be doing this on a second hard drive. And I will also show you some of the tricks I learned if you're using an NVIDIA video card. Because that can be tricky to get working right in Ubuntu. So this method should work flawlessly. So what will you need? First. You'll need a Windows PC or laptop that's already running Windows. Next, you'll need a USB pen drive that's 8 gigs or bigger. Then, you'll need a second hard drive. Now, I get it that we could resize our existing hard drive, but that makes things a little more complicated, and I like complete separation of concerns, so that I can format my Ubuntu drive whenever I want, or my Windows drive whenever I want, and they won't affect each other. But the drive speed and drive capacity are up to you. And if you need some suggestions, I'll have some in the description below. So let's get started. First we'll go out to Ubuntu and download the latest version. You can choose between the LTS and the latest version. We're going to choose the LTS, so we'll download it. Next we'll want to download Etcher. And Etcher helps us image our USB drive with this ISO that has Ubuntu on it. So we'll download this and install it. Then we'll launch Etcher. Next. You'll want to make sure that your USB pen drive is plugged into your machine. Once that's plugged in, we'll choose Flash from File, then we'll choose the Ubuntu ISO that we downloaded, then we'll select our target. You should see your USB drive here, and we'll select it, and then we'll flash the drive. So this might take a minute or two depending on the speed of your USB drive. And then after it's done flashing, it will validate it. And now our flash drive is good to go. Like I mentioned earlier, we want to install Ubuntu on a second drive. So if you don't have a second drive in your machine, now's a good time to install it. And that should be as simple as opening up your case, installing the actual drive, attaching your SATA cables and your power cable, closing your machine back up, and powering it on. Once your machine's back on and you're back into Windows, you should go into Disk Manager to make sure it's connected. The way that I normally do it is just right-click the Start menu and go to Disk Management. If you can't find it, you can always press the Windows key plus R. This will open a run command and then type in diskmgmt.msc and hit enter. This will launch the disk management console. And you should see your new disk here. This is the disk I'm going to install Ubuntu on. Now it's not formatted. If yours is, you might want to delete the partition. It makes finding it easier when we're installing Ubuntu. But this is a good sign so we'll close out of here. After formatting our USB drive, let's reboot our system. Now we'll reboot our machine. Now when it starts up, you want to press the hotkey that selects your boot device. For me, it's F8. Some machines, it's F10. Then you'll want to choose the USB device that we created. For me, it's this PNY one. And you might see one listing for the partition and one for the actual drive. 
choose the one for the drive. And here's a pro tip if you're using an NVIDIA video card. You'll actually want to choose Ubuntu Safe Graphics. This is because my video card doesn't get initialized during the installation and you'll just see a black screen. So if you're using any video card besides an integrated one, choosing Safe Graphics is a safe option. So let's choose that. Then we'll see a check our thumb drive. This should only take a minute, but you'll want to let it verify your pen drive just in case there's some errors. Better to know about those now than later. So on this screen, we'll want to choose to install Ubuntu. Next, we'll choose our language. Next, we'll choose the type of installation we want. I want a normal installation because I want everything that comes with Ubuntu. Then we'll choose whether or not to download and install updates while we're installing Ubuntu. I'm going to leave this checked. Next, you'll want to check the checkbox to install third-party software. This will install drivers, codecs, all the things to make Ubuntu work the way you would expect it to. Then we'll choose continue. Next, we're going to choose our installation type. We can choose between install Ubuntu alongside Windows, erase the disk and install Ubuntu, or something else. Now you might think to choose install Ubuntu alongside Windows, but that will lead you down a path of repartitioning your Windows disk to install Ubuntu. So I'm going to choose erase and install something else. Once we choose that, now we can pick any of our drives. And if we pick from the dropdown, we should see that one drive that we installed. And we can see we don't have any partition information. This is why I didn't partition it. Makes it really easy to pick out. So let's choose that one. Then we'll choose install now. Then we'll choose continue. And now it's actually installing in the background. So let's finish this up. Choose your time zone. Then we'll choose our name. Then we'll name our computer. Then we'll set our username and password. Then we'll click continue. And now it's going to finish installing the rest of the operating system. So this might take a minute or two. And now it looks like it's installed. So let's restart. Now you should remove the installation media from your machine before it boots up the next time. And immediately we're greeted with Grub. This is a good sign. This means that Ubuntu is installed, the Grub bootloader is installed, and we can boot from Ubuntu. So let's boot. And here we go, we're signed in and we have Ubuntu running. So your screen orientation might be a little bit off if you have multiple monitors, but I've adjusted mine so it looks better now. So it looks like there's updates, but we'll hold off on that. And so remember how I said we should have NVIDIA video drivers installed now and take advantage of our video card? Let's check. So if you press the super key, which is the Windows key, or press this button down below, we can search. And we should be able to search for NVIDIA. There we go, NVIDIA. And you can see it detects my video card and everything looks good. So that's a really good sign. Everything in Ubuntu seems to be running fine. And you can continue to configure and tweak this to your liking. But let's make sure we didn't destroy our Windows drive. So let's restart. Power off and restart. This time when we boot, we're gonna hit our key again to select our boot drive. And now I can see I have both Windows and Ubuntu. And it looks like Windows is there, but we won't boot yet. If you notice, the first time we booted, it was Ubuntu. Now, that's fine if you always want to boot into Ubuntu first. But if you want to switch back to having Windows be your default boot system, let's go into Enter Setup. Now, this screen is going to differ depending on your motherboard manufacturer, but the idea is still the same. We just want to change the boot order of our system to boot to our Windows drive instead of our Ubuntu drive. So for me, let's go into boot. And then right here, we can see that our boot option one is our Ubuntu system. And our second boot option is Windows. So let's just change these around. Say that Windows is first and Ubuntu is second. And then we'll want to save this. For me, it's F10 and then hit OK. And now when we boot, it should boot into Windows. Maybe? Kind of? Hey, there's Windows. And now we're back into Windows and everything's booting fine. So congratulations, we now have a dual boot system. You can now boot to Windows or Ubuntu whenever you like. And the nice part about having these on separate drives is that you don't have to destroy your Ubuntu installation if you do something on Windows and vice versa. You don't have to destroy your Windows installation 
if you do something on Ubuntu, or if you want to switch flavors of Ubuntu, or if you want to switch versions of Linux altogether. And so this process will work with most versions of Linux. I just happen to enjoy Ubuntu. And so what version of Linux did you install? Did you install Ubuntu? Did you run into any problems along the way? Are you just going to stick to virtualizing Ubuntu on some other machine? If so, let me know in the comments section below. And while you're down there, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you have more questions, you can always join my live stream. I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so if you have a question about this video or any of my videos, hop in my stream and let's figure it out. So, thanks so much for watching and till next time, stream on my friends. You know, I hear some people say Ubuntu and Ubuntu is totally fine. Um, but I was like, I remember back in the day when I was doing it and I'm like, again, like no one I knew was doing it. I couldn't even say the word Ubuntu to anyone. They would be like, bless you. You know, they would have no idea what I was talking about. So I like Googled and looked up like what the word meant. And I think it's a word that comes from Africa. And I was like, how, how do they pronounce it there? And I was like, Ubuntu. And I'm like, okay, that's how I'm going to pronounce it. Cause at least, at least I can refer and point back to something. And I know people pronounce things anyway. That's totally fine.